everyone, or afternoon, depending on where you are. It is 11 a.m. Central Standard Time here in the U.S. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary married to Norman, and we broadcast from our home in St. Charles, Missouri. We're right in the center of the country. And I haven't been on for a few days. We took uh, some time off, went on a little vacation in Branson, Missouri. It's uh, about a four-hour drive from here. Hello there. Welcome. And it was good to just get out of our routine, and we... Uh, we saw some good shows and just enjoyed being together. So, but I said to Norman um, on the way home that even though it was a nice getaway for us, we can never get away from the knowledge that the majority of people in the world are not saved and because of that will go to hell when they die. And that's, um, that's a tragedy that could be avoided because God has made a way for every person in the world to be able to go to heaven. Hello there, welcome everyone. My name is Selma Edker, Protestant Christian missionary, and our mission is always to talk about Jesus, that he alone is the way of salvation. There's only one way that a person can go to heaven when they die, and that is by being spiritually born again. And that is according to the word of the Lord. The world and all of its many religions spout the lies of the devil that you can just choose your way to go to heaven depending on whatever you want to believe, whatever religion you want to follow, whatever sounds good to you. Just choose your own way. And that is what the devil wants. He wants you to go to hell. The devil is, be, he's the instigator of killing. The devil is the source of hate. The devil does not want you to go to heaven. He wants you to die and suffer in the torment of hell. But God has this free gift of salvation that is available for every single person. It is by God's grace that we are saved through faith. And this is not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, a free gift from God. God's grace is his love and favor for every single person in the world, and it is, is his power that actually will help you to turn to Jesus, to have faith in Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, in which he died in our place, and he paid the penalty for the sins of all mankind. It is God's grace that can help you turn to Jesus and say, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my rebellion against God. And then you have to repent. And that is simply, very humbly surrendering yourself unto the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You say, I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, and I will live in obedience to the teachings of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. It's simple, and the only thing it costs you is humility. But so many people in the world 
have a hard heart, a rebellious heart, an arrogant attitude. They want to do things their own way and will not humble themselves and surrender to Jesus. And many, many people in the world mock God. We heard an example of that this morning on the TV. People think they can mock God and nothing's going to happen to them. I have a scripture verse about that. I'm going to read it to you. And it's in the book of Galatians in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And this is simply our current English Bible. It was translated from Greek into English in 1500 A.D. This is God's word. It has been around for centuries. God does not change. His word never changes. God doesn't change his mind. He's not like the people of the world. Today, he want to be politically correct. God is God. God is the creator. God is sovereign. God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's created everything that there is. And God's requirement for you to go to heaven is to be spiritually born again. Jesus said you must repent and you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. And you can read those words for yourself in the New Testament if you dare to. It says in the Bible, let me find my verse. Let's see. All right, I'm going to read it from, uh, we have a comparative Bible. So I'm going to read it in a couple of different wordings. It says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And in the divide wording, it says, do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, disdained or mocked by mere pretensions or professions or by his precepts being set aside. And then it says, he inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. In other words, if you're mocking God, you're deluding, you're, you're deluded. For whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. Nothing good is going to happen to you when you mock God. You might think you're on the top of the world. This was some comedian or some somebody well known that was mocking God and thinking, oh, he's somebody special, and a lot of people will listen to him and just go along with what he's saying. And he's not the only one. I hear people mocking God all the time. But they will suffer the consequence if they never repent. I'm going to read it in, a, in another version. The NIV, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. You hear that? The one who sows to please the Spirit meaning the Holy Spirit of God, 
from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So, that's some pretty strong words. If you think it's all fun mocking God, you're going to be sadly mistaken. And yet, the awesome thing about God is that he is willing to forgive anyone, even those who have mocked him, if they sincerely repent. And that does not mean you just say, oh God, I'm sorry, I really didn't mean it. That is not repentance. Repentance means that you humbly turn to the Lord and say, please forgive me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, and I will live in obedience to the whole Word of God in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And that is the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists. That is repentance. It's not just saying you're sorry. It is a supernatural transformation by the Holy Spirit of God when you are born again by God's grace, by repentance. The Bible says you're actually a new creation in Christ Jesus. It's like you're a brand new person. You were just born at that moment. That's what it is to be born again. It's a spiritual rebirth because we are all born with a sin nature. And that is why we sin. It is normal and natural to sin when you're a sinner. But when you're born again, you have been recreated. Your spirit man is recreated. You become a new person. You were cleansed from the power of sin and the power of Satan over your life. You cannot be a Christian and a sinner at the same time. And that's what I was taught for years. It is a lie of the devil. If you were still a sinner after you're a Christian, then why did Jesus die? He didn't need to do anything because that's saying nothing changes. You just say Oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I know he died on the cross for my sins. Well, why did he die? Why did he sacrifice himself on the cross if it doesn't have any effect on a person's life? Jesus sacrificed himself. He willingly went to the cross now that is divine love. He died for the sins of all mankind. And Jesus is God. He was a divine God-man. But just because he was part God doesn't mean that he didn't suffer. He suffered great agony on that cross and even before he went to the cross because of the evil people he was mocked he was scorned he was beaten he was spit on they pulled his beard out they put thorns on his head and then drove these huge spikes through his hands and his feet on the cross you think that's not suffering? And he did it for us. For every person. Not just select people. Jesus died on the cross 
for all people. He sacrificed himself. And it says in the, in the Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1, that when you are born again, spiritually born again, truly loving Jesus and living for him, that then we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Jesus died. He sacrificed himself on the cross. He died for us so that we don't have to do that. But God says we are to be a living sacrifice. So what does that mean? That means that when you love Jesus and you choose to follow him, that is, that is the true Christians. It's only those who've been spiritually born again, loving Jesus, following him, obeying him. To be a living sacrifice means that you live in obedience to the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists in the New Testament. It means that you no longer live the way you lived when you were a sinner. You don't do the things you did. You don't go the places that you went, or at least that's true for most people. I didn't, I didn't ever go to bars and drink and go partying and all that stuff like most people do. I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else. That just wasn't my lifestyle. But when, if you, that is your lifestyle, when you are truly born again, you no longer want to do those things. Because Jesus is first in your life. Jesus is the one you love and you want to please him. That's what it is to be a real Christian. You want to please God. You want to live for him and you want to share this gospel message of salvation with the people of the world. And I'm going to read... I. Recently, I talked about why is it that we are born? Why are we here? And the simple answer is that we are here to worship the Lord. And it says in the Bible, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And now I'm going to read that verse from the Amplified Bible. In the Amplified, it's saying the same thing, but it just uh, elaborates on the meaning of the words. It says, the end of the matter is fear God, which means to revere and worship him, knowing that he is, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole of man, the full original purpose of his creation, the object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of all happiness, the adjustment to all inharmonious circumstances and conditions under the sun, and the whole duty for every man. We are here to worship the Lord, to revere Him, and to be obedient to His word. Now, when it says here, it's talking about keeping his commandments. It is not talking about the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, 
that many people are familiar with. The Old Testament was far the old times. The Old Testament is the history of mankind, beginning with the creation by God. The Old Testament ends, and then the New Testament begins with the birth of Jesus. And all of those religious and ceremonial laws of the Old Testament was for that time. It is not for today. But Jesus says now the greatest commandments is this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And there's only one way that that is possible, and that is to be spiritually born again. Because the Bible says, when you are born again, the very love of God is shed into your heart. Your heart is changed when you're born again. It's filled with the love of God. He loves you and you love him back with your whole being when you're born again. And that love then enables you to love other people with God's love. And that causes you to want them to be saved also. It doesn't mean that you will like everyone, but regardless of what kind of person they are, regardless of their sins, regardless of how they act, regardless of how hateful they are. It's that love of God in you that truly wants them to be saved, to be changed. And if that hateful, evil person gets born again, they're no longer going to be hateful and evil they will become a loving person, loving God and loving their neighbor. That is the only way the world is changed, is by one person at a time, falling in love with Jesus, because their whole life changes. It is... It is God's grace that enables that to happen. So, that is my message for today. My question to you is, are you one who mocks God? Are you a person who has an unrepentant heart? I'm going to read again this verse that I read very frequently on these broadcasts. It's from the book of Romans, chapter 2 in the Protestant Christian Bible. It says, Do you show contempt for the riches of God's kindness, tolerance, and patience? not realizing that God's kindness leads you to repentance, but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God loves you. He wants you to repent. He wants you to love him back. He wants you to love other people. So you have a decision to make. Now that you've heard the gospel message, the ball is in your court. You have to make a choice. Are you going to 
mock God? Are you going to ignore God? Are you going to reject Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you do, you will end up in hell. And you can try to convince yourself that hell isn't real. But in the end, sadly, you will find out how real it is. Many people think they're wiser than God. And they can just do whatever they want, choose their own way. Pretend, you can try to pretend you never heard the gospel message. But it's all on you. You choose Jesus and go to heaven, or you reject Jesus and you'll end up in hell. That is the word of the Lord. And that's my message for today. My husband Norman will be on tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And we have, you can see on my sign, godspokesman.com is our website. And there is a link on there to our internet radio station. It plays all the time. Here's Norman's name. You can Google Norman Etker. We're also on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. VK, Path, anywhere you want to look. These messages will never go away. People around the world are hearing the gospel message. And once you hear it, then it's up to you. We always encourage you to read the word of the Lord for yourself. Read the New Testament of the Protestant Christian Bible. It's the only place you're going to find the truth. You don't have to believe us. Read it for yourself. There's a, a saying, the proof, the proof is in the pudding. In other words, read it for yourself and then decide. God holds you responsible. He gives you the choice to choose. Lord willing, I will be here on Tuesday morning. I hope you're not a mocker or a rejecter. Think about it.